In the corn shell, you do have command line editing available to you, but it's not the way it's done in Bash. It's much more tricky than that. If you recall our chapter on Vi, you need to be able to have a mastery of the Vi commands in order to use the command line editing in the corn shell. That's not entirely true. You don't really need to be a master. But you do have to have some familiarity with Vi commands in order to be able to issue those same commands to the corn shell. This is how it works. You have to imagine that your shell command line, your one line command that begins with say your dollar prompt or whatever your prompt is, is actually a little one line Vi session. It's just a single line. Rather than Vi being a full screen of 25 lines and 80 characters, it's just one line. You may also recall that when you start Vi, you start Vi in command mode. Remember the two different modes of Vi, command mode and insert mode? Well, imagine if you want to imagine that your shell command line is a one line Vi session, then you have to further imagine that it is actually in insert mode when you begin. Now if you can imagine all of that, then you actually shouldn't have too much trouble using the corn shell's command line history or command line editing. All you have to do is know how to edit a line in Vi. Naturally also you have to be able to go up and down in Vi. Can you remember how to do that? So how would we do it? Let's say we've made a mistake on a line and we want to re-enter that line but correcting the mistake. Well the first thing we need to do is move up to the previous line. Now we could use the up arrow key for that but Interestingly enough, the corn shell's little version of Vi does not support the up arrow. So you, use, you have to use one of the other Vi commands available. So can you remember what it is to go up a line? Well, there's two of them. There's the minus sign, just minus, or K. K will take you up. But before we can even enter the minus sign or the K, we have to go from insert mode into command mode. Now I know this is starting to sound complex, but it actually does get quite simple. So can you remember how to go from insert mode to command mode? Yes, of course, you have to press the escape key. So the very first thing you do if you want to access your corn shell command line history is press escape. Once you've done that, you can use K in place of the up arrow key to scroll back through all the commands that you've just entered. And once you find one that you want to re-enter, all you have to do is press enter. Alternatively you could go back and make some modifications to it. Let's have a look at that. So to summarize we press escape to enter command mode, K to go up a line and enter to simply re-enter the command. Let's do that. I've taken the liberty of obtaining a little corn shell here. Now before the corn shell will actually behave in this special Vi command line editing and history mode, you have to do a clever thing. You have to set an environment variable and you have to set it to you have to set the variable that is called editor and you have to set it to Vi. Now once you've done that, your commands are fully available. Naturally, if you want that to be in effect every time you log in, you have to put that exact command into your dot profile. So now I can type in some kind of command, ls minus c for example, and now I have to think of this little flashing cursor as being a one line via session. So if I now press escape, okay, I've just pressed escape, you don't see anything visibly happening on the screen, but now I can type in k to go back to the previous line. So I've gone back to the previous line and I just press enter and it reissues that command. Now I'm no longer in command mode. I've gone back into insert mode from the action of pressing enter. So now if I wanted to go back and change that, I could press escape K again. Now let's say I want to change it. Let's say I want to add one letter to the end of this command line. Can you remember the Vi command to append something to the end of a line? It's capital A. Remember capital A? So you type in Cap Shift A, capital A, and the cursor jumps to the end, and then you type in whatever it is that you want, like um, the letter A, for example. Now I'll go back and do it again, Escape K, and this time I'll use space. Remember space will actually move you along the line, space, 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 and I'm going to use CW, which is change word, to change the word CA, so I do CW, 
and the CA disappears and I'm going to change that word CW change word to the letter L and then I'm back in insert mode again okay one more example escape K and space space now if I press X X X I can actually delete those letters and press enter and so on so once you've pressed escape and K to go back up to the previous line or find whatever line it is that you need you can use the commands like DW to delete a word, CW to change a word, X to delete a letter and then you also need to if you want to add new uh, letters and words into the command line you need to use something like I for insert or A for append or capital I to insert at the beginning or capital A to append at the end or in fact any of the VI commands that you're familiar with they will all work it's a very handy little feature to be able to do that you can even use the forward slash which searches for text and let's do that I type in forward slash no that's not going to work because I'm still in you know, backspace over that I was still in insert mode so now I press escape and then backslash and let's say CA to find the last command that had a C and an A in it and there it is LS minus CA so it's actually scrolled back through all the commands that I've entered until it finds one that has a C and an A in them and then I can re-enter that one it's a very very handy facility to have and you get used to it quite quickly I know that VI is a very unfriendly editor but if you're comfortable with VI then you'll also be very comfortable with the corn shell command line editing. Don't forget to put that environment variable into your dot profile.